Hello everybody, how you doing? I love you, God bless you, Jesus loves you, you're awesome and amazing, and uh, I just felt like reading God's word, um, and I opened the Bible and I went to Acts 9, and it's just beautiful, I, I don't know if I'll read the whole, the whole part of it, but I just wanted to make a quick video, um, I'll be reading from a, a new King James Version Bible that I picked up I think it's awesome uh, it's my first New King James Bible it's old it's used I had to tape it up but uh, the word is beautiful in it and I like the red the red letters in it um, uh, I I just I just um, I just love Jesus uh, I just got done finishing a, a Todd White video You know, he said something that was very, very important, and a lot of people don't understand it. You, you, it let me just pray, let's invite the Holy Spirit into this little meeting, okay? Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for who you are. I just thank you, Lord God, for your love. Thank you that I'm alive today. I thank you that I'm able to breathe. I thank you that that you're with me. And angels are surrounding me right now. I thank you for the ministry, Lord God, that, that you brought to my family, Lord God. It's your ministry, not ours. I thank you that every single day we get to pray for people and feed people the food that you provide. You provide through through people dropping off, through people handing us a little bit of money. Lord God, for people dropping off, even the homeless come out and help drop things off. Not much, but a little bit. I just thank you, Jesus. I thank you that that more people are hearing about it and they're showing up. I thank you that yesterday, Lord God, that that you told me that there was people in the hospital, Lord God, and I went to pray for them. So today, Lord God, I, right now, I just ask that you give me their names again, and I'll speak to the homeless today as I'm feeding them, Lord, and. Uh, and we can get the names right and I can find out where they are. Because as I'm out there, Lord God, feeding them and sharing Jesus with them, th those are my congregation, you know. Uh, I'm out there trying to reach the lost, Lord. And they don't have nobody else to go visit them in the hospital. And I, and I, I want to, uh, to be there for them. And Lord God, I pray for Juan. Lord God, I heard he was in a coma. I went to see him. The name wasn't right. I don't know their names fully. And for Tomas, Lord God, I just pray that these names are mentioned. And God knows who they are. But the people in, that have watched my videos would pray for them. Uh, Juan, his, he's deaf. And I prayed for his ears many times. And uh, he's an alcoholic. And Tomas is liver damage. And they eat. When they're out there, they eat, and I haven't seen them for a while. And I heard that they were, that they were sick in the hospital, Lord God. So just let me know what's going on with them, Lord God, and just bring your angels around them, and whoever prays for them, Lord God, just touch them and fill them up, Lord God, and so these prayers can be granted in Jesus' name. And Lord God, as we get into your Word, I just pray right now in the name of Jesus that Holy Spirit speaks through me, Lord God. Give us your eyes to see and your ears to hear, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, blind eyes open in the name of Jesus. Whew. I pray that angels are surrounding people right now, protecting them, ministering to them. And I pray for bodies to be healed. And I pray for cancer to go right now. I cancel the assignment and cancer over your life right now in Jesus' name. I pray for limbs that, that are dead to come alive right now. I pray for the spirit of paralysis to be loosed from people right now in Jesus' name. I command it. I command every evil spirit that's causing sickness over their lives right now to be go in Jesus' name. Right now. Thank you, God, that you love them. Thank you, God, that freedom and, and, and being set free and chains broken is happening right now. Thank God that you're filling them up with your presence, Lord God. I speak that tingling fire and power of God to go through their whole body and make it whole in Jesus' name. In Jesus name and I pray Lord God in the name of Jesus that the people that I prayed over in the hospital last night Lord God I, I pray that they come 
for the knowledge of Christ. The babies I prayed over, the little boy who was in an accident on his bike is bloodied up. Lord God, I pray that he is healed. Lord God, and that guy who let me pray didn't understand it. Lord God, bring healing to his body. Bring healing to everybody, Lord God. Go through every hospital in this world and bring healing to it, Lord God, to every person. I pray for the Holy Land, Lord God, Israel and Jerusalem. I pray for peace. And I pray for protection and peace over, over my country and every other country in this world. Lord God, I pray for my town and, and the city hall and the mayor's office, Lord God, that, that just grace and, and heaven is being poured out on these places, Lord God. Change the atmosphere in the air today, Lord God, in the, in the towns, in the cities, in the, in the parks, in the churches, and just bring your Holy Spirit through this whole place. Your Holy Spirit, Lord. Thank you, Lord God, as we read your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Ooh. Oh, God's amazing. Amen. I also wanted to share uh, yesterday was 420. Um, it used to be a marijuana holiday for me. Uh, this is my second 420 that um, marijuana free. Um, I actually saw someone say 420. I didn't even realize the date, and so I it reminded me of, uh, uh, of the days where you know I used to smoke a lot and you know I'd wake up in the morning and have my rituals. Wake up and and I was smoking every two hours for you know. At least 20 out of 36 years of marijuana addiction. And, and I mean, there was so much drug addiction in my life. And I, I'm just so thankful that I forget about 420. Jesus is amazing. Um, and honestly, uh, I still, um, I get intoxicated through the presence of God. When I Like right now, I, I'm starting to like, I guess, recover. That prayer, I got hit, I got hit twice, like just... Whew, man, and and, uh, and I feel the presence of the Lord right now, and it's beautiful. It's very relaxing. It's it's, it's a, a, a like I feel like a joy that came over me, um, and that's that's my new addiction. Is is just loving the Lord and and being in His presence as often as I can, and, and sharing Jesus with the world um, and my town. So you, know, you might call it crazy, but um, you know what? Um, they call Jesus crazy, right? And they persecuted him, and they even killed him, you know. So maybe sometimes we need to be crazy. Uh, the Bible says to imitate Christ. You know, I mean, I believe Paul said, imitate me, for I imitate Christ, you know. So we are to become little Jesus throughout the world. And, and we do that when we allow uh, the Holy Spirit to take over and, and, and transform us with grace. So anyways, I just wanted to share that. Let's read Acts 9. Uh, I'll just begin and let the word of God fill this whole room up, fill our hearts up in Jesus' name. In Acts 9 it says, Then Saul, Saul who, who became Paul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked letters from him to the synagogues of Damascus so that if he found any who were of the way okay so Saul was someone who persecuted and killed uh, Christians okay and very smart man grew up in the Jewish faith and and believe he actually believed he was doing right so he was blinded, okay? Uh, the, devil, the devil will blind people. The devil will put veils over you where you won't be able to see the truth. And it's only God can, and Jesus Christ can help you with that. You know, only only the Spirit of God and the, and, and, and you giving your life to God can, can lift those veils. You know, you, you probably say, what are you talking about? I can see perfectly. I can see you in this video. But you know what? If you're not living your life for Christ, then you're blinded. And now this guy, who was going around killing Christians, who but he believed that he was work, doing God's work, he was blinded, even though he's seen. 
He was very intelligent. He knew the word of, of his religion. He was, you know, high honors in his faith. Uh, and um, but he was blind. He was blind. He could not see the truth until chapter nine, <laughs> Max. <laughs> So he asked, the, he asked the letters of him to the synagogues of Damascus so that if he found any who were of the way. The way was Christians. Okay. Whether men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. So he, want, he wanted paperwork. You know, like, it's like a warrant. When a police gets a warrant for your arrest, he got paperwork. He goes and gets you and brings you in, shackled and bound. Okay, so this is what, what was happening. As he journeyed, so he already got the papers, he got permission to go out and start capturing Christians. As he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly a light shone around him from heaven. So he was journeying, he has his soldiers, you know. It's like uh, the police, when they, when they take a team out and they, and they do start pulling people in on warrants. Just like that. He had his police with him. His soldiers. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly a light shone. So, this is his what happened. A light shone. He encountered Jesus. He encountered Jesus. A quick question. Have you encountered Jesus? Because when you encounter Jesus, you know, your life's going to change. So. Suddenly a light shone around him from heaven. Then he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, this is red letters, that's Jesus speaking. Why are you persecuting me? Okay. And he said, Who are you, Lord? Then the Lord said, and this is red letters again, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. It is hard for you to kick against the gro the goads. Now you can look up the word goads. Um, so he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what do you want me to do? Okay. So he was killing people who believed in Jesus, had paperwork to go to go get him and bring him in. And then he encountered Jesus. And when you encounter Jesus, we all, you, me, and everybody who has a Jesus encounter, should get on our knees and do the same thing that he did. <coughs> this guy ended up writing many books in the Bible. His teachings are so powerful. And it all started with this day. He said, who are you? The Lord said, I am Jesus, the one who you're persecuting. Amen. So he am scared, trembling, astonished, just shocked. Lord, what do you want me to do? And that's the question. Every day you should ask yourself, Lord, what do you want me to do? I am here for you, Lord. Not my will, but your will. Amen. And then the Lord tells him. Red letters. I am Jesus. Who am Wait a minute. Arise and go into the city. Arise. They get up. And go into the city. And you will be told what you must do. Okay, so now he heard from Jesus. And he obeyed. He did what the Lord said. And the men who journeyed with him stood speechless. They, hearing a voice, but not seeing anything. So, Jesus revealed himself to, to Saul, but not to the soldiers. But they heard something going on, and they saw Saul on the ground talking to somebody. But they didn't, they're just freaking out. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Then Saul rose from the ground, and when his eyes were opened, 
he saw no one. So he was blinded by the light. But let me tell you something. When I was reading this, he was already blind. I believe the Lord, the Lord just showed him what he, what he really was already. Blind. Blind. So, whew, Holy Ghost. When he opened his eyes, he saw no one. But they led him, so the soldiers led him by hand and brought him to into Damascus. And he was there three days without sight. Okay, now three is a really wonderful number. Uh, it's very biblical. Uh, three, uh, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Three is very, very biblical. It's a divine number. It's... Um, it, and, and, and it's what it's beautiful to see that three days without sight Jesus rose in three days okay it's it's the father son holy ghost number okay and for three days without sight and ne neither ate nor drink so he was not eating he was just sitting there blinded waiting for instruction realizing that his whole life it just changed everything he lived for everything he studied everything he believed in just got rocked he met the Jesus that he he was killing people who believed in him that's that's amazing thank you Lord and you know what we get to read about this Ask for that encounter with Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Now, there was a certain disciple named, at Damascus named Ananias. And to him the Lord said in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Here I am, Lord. So the Lord said to him, Arise and go to the street called Straight. Isn't that awesome? The street called straight in the Bible. This whole this is a beautiful chapter right here. The whole Bible is beautiful, but you, you, you got to understand. <coughs> There's just so much you could take in from this, it's, and I read it, and then I didn't see last time I read. I made a make a video on it, and now I'm seeing this all this beautifulness in here. Go to the street called straight. So he. And, and inquire at the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus for behold he is praying so he was praying for three days God rocked him Jesus rocked him and in a vision he has seen a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hands on him so that he might receive his sight Okay, that's the red letters. The Lord told Ananias what to do. And then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority. Amen. He has authority from the chief priest to bind all who call your name. Okay, I'm going to stop right there real quick. It says authority. I want you to know that the Lord's been teaching me and telling me, you know, I'm, I, in this ministry, I'm real busy. I'm always, you know, doing stuff and, and, and I'm listening to sermons. I'm in my house doing stuff and listening to sermons. I'm out there and, you know, I don't watch too much TV. Um, I, we really got to watch what we put in our eyes and our ears, especially television was, was made, made to teach us about the Lord. There is good TV to learn about the Lord. I, I watch sermons on TV but authority I believe the Lord is trying to trying to get to me to understand my authority um, and that's not just power um, authority and authority comes from presence with God authority comes from presence with God uh, God wants you to have a relationship with him uh, if you're his bride then um, you need to know your husband But the Lord said to him, Go 
for he is a chosen. So Ananias was like, wait a minute, Lord, this guy's bad. I don't, we really don't want to go to him. He'll kill us. Or he'll kill me. He hurts people, Christians. And then the Lord said to him, go, for he is a chosen vessel of mine. Isn't that beautiful? How would you like to be a chosen vessel? So basically, anybody who comes to Christ, you didn't choose Jesus. He chose you. Go for, he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before the Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. For I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. Now, Paul suffered. I, I would encourage you to study Saul and Paul and, and read what Paul wrote in the Bible. Um, this, is, this is where it started with Paul. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. And Ananias went this way and entered the house and laying his hands on him he said brother Saul the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road as as you came has sent me that you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit immediately there fell from him his eyes something like scales and he received his sight at once and he arose and was baptized. Hallelujah. Baptized. So when he had received food, he was strengthened. Then Saul spent some days with the disciples of Damascus. And then 20, immediately he preached the Christ in the synagogues that he is a son of God. Then all who heard were amazed and said is this not the one not he who destroyed those who who called on this name in Jerusalem and has come here for that purpose so that he might bring them bound to the chief okay I'm gonna stop right there but I want to share with you too uh, Ananias now imagine Ananias's faith no we, we, we just discussed what happened to Paul but imagine Ananias faith Ananias knew about Paul. I mean Saul. Saul who became Paul. Ananias knew about Saul. Okay. He knew that this man killed Christians. And hearing the Lord, the Lord told him to go and put hands on this man who killed Christians. Okay. This man who around the world, they were saying stay away from, hide from him. He will kill you. He's going around. He's got paperwork. He's got warrants to kill you if you believe in Jesus. But he trusted. He heard the Lord and he trusted the Lord. And that's what we got to do. We got to trust the Lord and bring the gospel and bring uh, healing and, and cast out devils. And we have to go to people and trust in the Lord. If Ananias can trust in the Lord to go put hands on a, a Christian murderer how, how why can't you as a believer step out of your box and go put hands on people that that, that, that are out there waiting for for us to to bring Jesus to them you know well, that's it I love you and God bless you uh, I had to share that little little bit of, of Saul and Paul. It's beautiful. Uh, I pray uh, pray that you have an encounter with Jesus. Pray that your blind eyes open, your deaf ears open. Pray, give your life to Jesus. You know, confess with your mouth, Jesus, uh, the sinner's prayer. You know, and um, and and allow grace to transform you. You know, call on the Holy Spirit. Call on Jesus. Say, Lord, give me your spirit. I, I want the heart of God. The Bible says that when we are born again, we get God's heart, God's mind. You know, uh, definitely uh, the faith of Jesus Christ was great faith. That's in you too. Uh, and don't forget authority. Authority. And when you have presence with God, you will learn your authority and you will learn who you are. If you're not born again, then you're an orphan. Okay, But you can be born again and still be an orphan if you don't know who your father is. 
And that's presence. And that's saying hello to the Lord. Spend time with Him. You don't have to be in a room. You can be driving your car and just turn off your radio. You know, if you have a moment, don't pick up your phone and put Facebook on. Not unless you're going to throw a scripture. Or glorify the, the Lord. But I notice a lot of people that they're so stuck on Facebook that they don't have time for Jesus. So now you got television taking you away from your time and presence with the Lord. And then you got Facebook, you know, and people's all about themselves. You know, and the Bible says people will be about themselves. You know, putting in selfies. Um, anyways, that's another another topic. Jesus loves you. And, and he wants to come into your life, into your heart. So, get in God's word. Share God's word with as much people as you can. Uh, bring uh, uh, the true gospel. Don't water it down. Don't beat around the bush. Don't sugarcoat it. Um, and you have to understand that those who, who believe in Christ and, and follow Christ, uh, they will be persecuted. But that, that brings character. And don't go in this 10%. Don't just add God to your life that you're already living. Because then you're a target for the enemy. And your family and your children. Okay? Um, it's either all or nothing. And and I know I'm learning too. I'm learning too. The Lord's been speaking to me about relationship. Instead of watching four sermons in a day, he told me straight out. He says, hey, you've watched a few sermons. Now come and talk to me. You know, And i got to turn the TV off and just say, hello, Lord. How you doing? I love you. Um, and, and be quiet and listen too. Um, if you want to know who you are you got to spend time with your father and, and there's different ways of looking at that uh, I just told you that he's the Bible t says we're brides we're brides you know but uh, he's also our father and he loves you so much I know that people are suffering and um, the devil's a liar. The devil came to kill and destroy. If you're going through a sickness, don't blame God. Blame the devil. Because he's the one that's causing this stuff. Okay? God wants everybody to be healed. God wants everybody. But you have to know him. You have to know him. You have to know what he wants. And that's by spending time with him. And, uh, pray for me too because, uh, you know, I'm doing the same thing you're doing. And I gave my life to the Lord about 17 months ago, and I'm still learning. Uh, still learning. But you know what? Um, every day there's testimonies in my life. Uh, every day I'm seeing and feeling uh, signs and wonders, you know, the presence of God. And I'm just going to keep at it. Uh, pray for my family because the, the enemy hates us and, and you know, we're always under uh, attack so man with a prayer heavenly father i thank you lord for who you are i love you so much and i thank you for your word i thank you for acts 9 lord god i just i just speak life over those watching in jesus name lord god blind eyes open in jesus name in jesus name Lord God, let them take the word of God and put it in their memory. And Lord, let them desire presence and relationship and teach them authority, Lord. It's very important. Thank you. You said we will have authority over the power of darkness. Lord God, teach us authority. My life and, and theirs life watching, Lord God. Bless their children and bless their families. In Jesus' name. All right, I love you and God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.